unfortunately, weather conditions there are not going to be very good. We've got dry fuels, the gusty, windy weather, and uh, humidity levels in the teens. So the Canyon Fire here, it sits between Anaheim and Corona. 2,000 acres burn, only 5% contained right now. So this is in Orange County, California. Taking a look here at Corona itself. Now here's the red flag warning. We've got uh, throughout much of uh, the area in Northern California as well as Southern California. So the fire weather forecast for tomorrow, it is elevated. Again, weather conditions not going to really be changing a whole lot. Still looking at very low humidities, gusty winds, and uh, those temperatures are going to be up there as well. So an elevated condition for today in Northern and Southern California. And right now, of course, trying to get that Canyon fire under control. Well, the seasons are heat wave, the latest in the se in the season on record. So basically, uh, we're talking record territory here. Six consecutive days of daily record set. When you hit 95 on Saturday, that tied for the hottest day of 2017. So not exactly your typical fall weather here in Chicago, but it's going to break. We've got one more day of it. Your average high 71 will be up to 91 or so today. Then tomorrow back down into average territory, 72 and 73 as our front pushes through through and we start to see some of that fall weather filter in. So it's been hot everywhere here in these areas across the high plains into the Midwest, Wichita, Kansas. Today, your high 68, you're going to be down 10 to 15 degrees below average. We've got the dueling seasons here, the battle of the seasons. Chicago, as I mentioned, a good 15 to 20 degrees above average. Here's why we've got this big ridge here of high pressure. It has been stuck and not budging a whole lot, a pretty stubborn one. The cold front edging very slowly here to the east and that's going to continue bringing some showers along with it and storms. But really the temperatures, the big story here above average temperatures today again in the Great Lakes uh, back down uh, tomorrow. We see that start to shift a little bit now moving into the northeast draping all the way back down into the south as well. So we'll start to see some improvements there. Finally, if you like fall weather that is in the Chicago area for today, though, 92 degrees. Very likely, Alex. Big dramatic change by tomorrow yeah, as it gets uh, closer to the Carolinas. Yeah, and a lot of effects in the Outer Banks in particular, but you know, much larger area of the eastern seaboard being affected by this enormous area of large waves. So even as the storm is winding down, this has already been generated and slowly going to work up the coast and then begin to move out as the storm itself moves out. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about rip current fatalities. There have been 51 this year already, all up and down the eastern seaboard and along the Gulf Coast as well. That's more than the number of people that have been killed by lightning mm -hmm. or tornadoes. Mm -hmm. So it really is a, a, a serious killer yeah, in weather. And uh, we want people to be really, really careful. Now, this is a look at a rip current. This is actually when the tide was moving out. So you can see what's going on mm -hmm. with the sea floor there. Mm -hmm. And when all that wave energy comes up to the shore, you get basically a higher pressure that develops. A lot of water is sitting right in that surf zone and it wants to run back out. And what happens is that little channels get cut and that allows the water to run out in these very narrow channels. You're getting a look at that. Usually you don't see the seafloor. Yeah. And in fact, most of the time it looks like nothing at all. And it is a little difficult to spot. This is if you it were is. standing on the beach. I mean, yeah. you have to kind of look for it. Right. But that parting of the waves is really what you should be on the lookout for, especially over the next few days. Exactly. The area where the waves are not breaking, and sometimes you'll see a little bit of discoloration as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the best policy would be to not get in the water right. at all. Right. But if you do get in the water, you've got these narrow channels that come out very rapidly, and eventually that energy is going to dissipate. It might take 100 yeah. feet yeah. for that to occur, but eventually it's going to dissipate. And once that happens, then you can begin to work parallel uh, along the shore there and start to come down back in. There's going to mm -hmm. be an inbound current as well. But, you know, it's one of those things where it's a lot to ask when you're panicking, oh, yeah. when you're worried, the shore is getting farther away. All you want to do is swim back in yeah. and you can't do that. It's a lot to ask to ask people just to relax. Yeah, about try it. to relax, let it take you out and then try to make your way back yeah. when it dies down. Exactly. But it's, it's, def it's difficult, yeah. even if you're a strong swimmer. So yeah. today that risk really all up and down the East Coast. Right. It, 
and, and the weather's beautiful in a lot of these yeah, areas. It's really warm. Mm -hmm. People want to go to the beach. And so it's a high risk now from southern New England down across the Jersey Shore, Delmarva, Ocean City, down into obviously the Carolinas yeah. and then farther south as well. So we definitely want folks to be very careful today. Absolutely. And it's not just going to be today, but for the next couple of days. Exactly at least. right. Yeah, it'll yeah, linger. A week probably. Yeah, exactly. All right. So here's the latest on the storm. Uh, still a category one hurricane that might be a little bit generous, but uh, mm -hmm. it's definitely slowly weakening and will slowly come up and along the coast through tomorrow and then rapidly start to pull away Thursday and into Friday. And as you look at the satellite picture, you can see that there is a, a little bit of deep convection or thunderstorm activity mm -hmm. in the southeast section of that core there, but a lot of the storm is now really exposed. And so without a lot of deep convection, it's only going to continue to weaken. There's cooler water here. Yeah. There's some dry air as well, but look how fast the clouds are moving. And it is a large storm. It's, it's a very large, large storm. Size, yes. yes, and there's a lot of momentum here. It's called inertial stability. And once that starts going, it doesn't just fall apart. Even if the thunderstorms decay, right. it doesn't just go away. Force and so, is already in motion, Exactly right? right. And so that's what's coming up and into the Outer Banks right now. So the tropical storm force winds are not very far away. Look at that uh, now gusting to near tropical storm force in Hatteras, and it's only mm -hmm. going to continue to step up, gusting to tropical storm force there in a Beaufort in North Carolina and gusting to 33 right now in Manteo. So it's only going to get windier through the course of the day today. Tropical storm warnings in effect here for the Outer Banks. And then there's storm surge to be concerned about as well. Mm -hmm. Now a storm surge warning for Hatteras and Ocracoke Islands. That is going to be primarily sound side mm -hmm. flooding. You've got a flow that's coming into Hatteras this way right now. But through most of this event tonight and tomorrow, we're going to see sound side flooding along the Pamlico Sound there. Two to four feet possible water the level. The good rise. news is then Maria moves out.